So what the hell just happened there? Well, aside from my corneas getting incinerated, I just got my full face and head scanned in a matter of four seconds using the Esper rig. This fancy caged ball is a geometric dome used for photogrammetry, which basically means it's a fully encapsulated capture experience. If you aren't aware, photogrammetry is the process of using photos to measure subjects and distances between objects. We're using it here in order to achieve digital immortality, because eventually when our real bodies decay from natural causes, we can still live on far, far beyond. But also because it's cool to be able to put real people in video games and movies and stuff. Let's learn some more on the technical side of things. I'm here inside our rig. It's got 72 cameras configured in a full 360 to get optimal coverage of a human bust seated right in the middle. Out of those 72 cameras, we got 13 up front here, focused just on the texture and detail of that person's face. All of the cameras and lighting are polarized, so it gives us optimal coverage for a nice 3D reconstruction of the geometry, as well as normal maps, specular maps, and diffuse maps. The 13 texture cameras will fire a number of times under different lighting conditions to make sure we get all of that information. So out of the 72 cameras, we actually generate 256 photos for one given capture. All of that information is synchronized, both data and lighting information, back to a master workstation where we can control the speed and timing of all of those captures. So once you do a scan, all that data goes to our system here. Each data set gets organized automatically by our system, which categorizes each capture by project and expression. So in this case, we have Spencer Crazy, because, well, I don't really know how else to define that wonderfully horrific face. Once we have that, we can feed that into reality capture and then create a 3D rendition using the photos after a bit. Hey, Emerson. Hey, Spence. Oh, wow, look at that scan. Scan quality looks pretty good. We've got a pretty good reconstruction on it. We'll actually notice when you look at the hair, the quality of the hair is actually not that great. It's because there's a lot of fine detail with all the individual strands of hair. So that makes it difficult for this process, photogrammetry. Normally we would probably slick the hair back, not worry about capturing it at all. Just focus on getting a good scan of the overall structure of the, the head. And then in post-production, you would add uh, virtual hair, do an actual groom within 3D software to, to get that final quality. Couldn't you just use a cell phone or other camera to do this? Yes, Jason, you could use a cell phone but you're sacrificing specific things. With something like the Esper rig, you get a far greater fidelity. You have the capacity to capture every facial expression you need. So to create a full CG character, you might be using you know, 40 to 60 different facial expressions. And those facial expressions might be really difficult to make and hold, right? There's also lighting built into the rig, so we can get higher quality of textures and different lighting conditions that you know, help with the whole texturing process. So now that we've seen how the capture works and also the reconstruction, let's take a look at how it can be used in a game engine. So now that we have the actual asset from Reality Capture, we can bring it into our real-time rendering software of choice. In this case, it's going to be Unreal Engine. And we might not be able to use it in some complicated animated ways like other assets can be, but we can certainly use the static mesh in a fun cinematic sort of way. Like this. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you've seen, follow us on the socials and all the online stuff. Buy our VHS, send us a carrier pigeon, we'll do some applied research work.